Welcome back to Gavin Sonic's B build. Well, we've got to the exciting part. Um, finish the wings. They're all stored away up on the mezzanine. And now it's time to actually get on and do the fuselage. And so where do you start? Well, I'm going to start here with F27. If we look at the chart, this is the fuselage down through here. And right at the bottom is SNB F27, which is this drawing here. And uh, because I've got the kit, the bent parts are already done for me. But I have got to make the fair lead assemblies. And the fair lead is made out of a piece of um, three quarter inch thick um, phenolic sheet, um, otherwise known in the UK as Tufnel. And uh, because I don't have a bandsaw, I've got a friend of mine to chop them into squares for me. And he also put the 19 mil hole down through the center of them as well. So there they are, a 40 mil square with a hole in the middle, three quarters of an inch thick. Now what I've got to do is mark up, these are the holes that uh, they're gonna fit over. Um, is to mark the four fixings, places for the uh, four rivets to go through to hold them on. And then once I've drilled those in the metal, I'm going to drill those down through the phenolic as well. So using the metal as a guide for the phenolic. They'll all be individual to each one, so they'll all have to be numbered. Um, because I can't guarantee to get the uh, the holes in exactly the same place on each one. Um, so we'll uh, get on and drill those. Then drill down through the phenolic. And uh, rivet them on. And that's our first little assembly job on the fuselage. So I'll busy away and do that. Oh, you'll notice that uh, I've had a clear up. I thought things are going to start again. Best to clear the place up um, between moving the wings out and uh, and bringing the um, parts in for the fuselage. I've also constructed a pair of new exhaust pipes for my kit car. Um, the original set lasted 10 years, which was good, but they rusted out and one fell apart and so I had to build a new set. Um, so I've done that the last uh, few weeks uh, on and off and that's all finished and ready to go on to the uh, kit car, ready for its uh, um, test. Um, roadworthiness test um, which in uh, the UK is called an MOT um, but in France is called a control technique so uh, it'll be going in for its control technique so I can put it back on the road again anyway enough of that I'll get on and drill some holes back soon so after two hours of uh, work We've got uh, all the holes positioned to mount the um, fair leads on and uh, we've finished the fair lead blocks as well. Um, they're ready to mount. Each one is numbered. Um, so they're in sets effectively now. So we've got number two and number two together there. And uh, that's what it looks like with the actual fair lead mounted in the middle. And uh, 
Now we've got the other side with the rivets ready to go in. Um, all the holes line up uh, brilliantly. Um, it's all nicely centred and square and I'm happy with that. So that's a couple of hours of um, drilling and uh, marking out and just getting everything perfectly right and they're ready to rivet on. I won't do them now because it's too late and we have guests in tonight. So uh, just got the next drawing out. And um, we've got some parts to locate and something to bend up. Got to make the longer arms. Cut a hole in the side skins, or a couple of holes. So a bit of work to do on the next one, which is uh, F26. So we've marked off F27 as complete, which is nice. So that's not too bad um, for a uh, couple of hours work today. Um, more again tomorrow. So a couple more hours and uh, the fair lead blocks are um, riveted on and they've gone on nicely and uh, I've cut all the holes in the right hand side skin so we've got the hole where the flap drive goes through and A little hole there for the uh, for the rudder wires to go through and then we've got an inspection pack hatch um, as well um, so I've cut those holes I've also put the bend in at the front 10 degrees which you can just see there uh, the sheet fitted nicely in in my bender and uh, it only took a, a very light amount of uh, pressure to bend it up 10 degrees slightly overdid it um, so I've flattened flattened it out slightly and uh, what I've done now is I've got all the parts out and just put them in place so I know where everything's going um, the things I can Clico in place are Clicoed in place uh, just to Hold them upright. I've got the stock material for the longer ons uh, in place and the two uh, cast brackets, or I don't know whether they're cast or I've probably machined out of, out of uh, some kind of material or whatever uh, at the front here. Um, and uh, the next thing to do really is to cut the long runs to length and on the front edges they've got to be cut at some uh, strange angles so uh, that's the next thing to do but uh, basically a couple of hours has uh, seen the side panel kind of take shape um, once we've uh, cut the front um, angles on the longer ones uh, they've got to be drilled all the way along there's a lot of holes um, and so we'll busy away and do that um, but looking good not looking too bad at all and that's the right hand side of the tail cone so I'm making some good progress now I've uh, spent a few days over Christmas and the, well, between Christmas and the New Year. Um, an odd hour here, odd hour there as I can uh, in between uh, the festivities and contacting all the relatives, etc, etc. Um, doing a little bit of work and uh, so I have so far cut the second um, set of holes in the left hand side panel so uh, we've got a hole there and an inspection hatch 
and the hole where the rudder cables go through there as well. I've cut all the long runs, um, so both sets are done. Um, they're all drilled, um, pilot drilled onto the, uh, the panels. And uh, I've drilled the holes for both of the front mounting plates. Um, they're done as well. And uh, with the right hand one, I'm pretty much at the point where I can put some um, rivets in. I've um, drilled out the ones, the holes that can be drilled out to, to full size. And uh, I'm just about to strip it all apart and uh, deburr the entire thing. Oh yes, we made the little rudder stop plates as well. Um, so they're fitted and drilled. So pretty much there for the side panels now. Uh, so my next job, as I say, is to uh, to drill or is to uh, deburr all the holes that have been drilled out, and uh, then I'll reassemble it all again. And then it's time to do some riveting. So uh, probably put about six hours work in over the last few days uh, to get to this sort of um, state um, so more later an hour or so later and we've stripped it down deburred it where required and then reassembled it and i've got some of the rivets in the holes ready to start riveting so there we go a little update on the progress so uh, the right hand panel which is now over here is now riveted as far as it can be riveted can't rivet the the top longer on um, and also the, the top rivet on each of the strengtheners. Um, but apart from that, most of the rest of it's um, riveted. And I've just put the left side up here. And uh, just about to drill out to rivet size. Then strip down and deburr, reassemble and rivet. So that's what we're up to this evening. Well, after a little bit more work, the second side is now pop riveted. So we have the right side and the left side of the tail cone pop riveted as far as you can. And uh, just so that you can see what they look like, I've uh, spent 10 minutes and put a couple of the cross members in just to hold them here for the moment. And that's the beginnings of our tail cone. Um, looking pretty good. So um, I've put the cross tie box in across the top, which is just loosely clicoed in place. And uh, the bottom cross member, and then a couple of the top cross members straight out of the box haven't done anything to them and they've click out in place and hey presto we've got a piece of the fuselage which looks like a piece of the fuselage amazing so uh, the next thing to do is to have a good look at the plans decide what we're going to do first and in what order we're going to do it and uh start the construction process. I've um, had the uh, flap and control arm out because I noticed that when I put the, uh, the cross tie box in place, 
it had some extra holes in the in the bottom and originally when I put the put the bottom on the holes were at the left hand end because that's where all the holes lined up but then I realized that actually they are the holes for the bracket that holds on the flap actuator which is going to sit in uh, in there and that the flap actuator is on the right hand side looking forwards um, of the aircraft as is the arm that gets operated and the holes were at the left hand end or the left hand side and this obviously isn't right so I flipped it and all the holes bar four line up so I'm just going to re-drill the four holes that don't and put it on that way around but note to Sonics somebody's got the drawing flipped um, apart from that everything's gone together well there is another small anom anomaly on the left hand skin you're told to cut a 32 mil diameter hole for the flap control arm to come through and it won't fit through the hole because the welds this is the end that has to go through and you have to kind of wheedle it in at a funny angle to get it through the hole but the welds that actually have welded on this part here the distance from there to that corner there which has to pass through the hole is more than 32 millimeters it's probably about 34 so I'm going to elongate the hole in one direction just a little bit to allow it to pass through but uh, again note to Sonics it won't go through the hole apart from that everything seems good um, I've located the little plastic bearing blocks um, which I couldn't find, but uh, they were in a got in the box in the wrong place. I found those. I found my actuator. There's the flat actuator and the two uh, brackets that I was talking about, which uh, fit onto the bottom of the uh, cross tie box. Um, the good thing is that also I realise that the actuator has got a potentiometer built into it for feedback um, because I'm not going to use just a switch. Um, I'm going to buy a little box of electronics to uh, so that I can have one button flaps up, first stage, second stage and full flaps. Um, I don't want to be messing about uh, um, with a sort of um, pressing a button, oh, that's not enough, press it again. I want them just to go to the positions and stay there. And for that, I need a bit of feedback from the unit to tell me where it is. And uh, I'm going to uh, drive it with an E-flaps controller from uh, Aircraft Spruce. Apart from that, everything's good. And uh, I've got a piece of fuselage. So more later.